Okay, so in order to demonstrate how this works, I prepared this very simple scene with just this monkey head that has a wood material. And this wood material is just a regular PBR setup with all the textures and the principal PSDF shader. And now let's say I duplicate these objects a few times. So let's add two duplicates. You can see that of course each of those duplicates looks exactly the same. So they all have this dark spot right next to the ear and the texture looks exactly the same on each of those objects. This can be good for a lot of cases. However, sometimes you might want to add a bit of variation so that your scene or your render doesn't look too repetitive. So in this tutorial, I want to show you how you can add randomness to the structure and the color of your material. So that each of those duplicates has its own variations, but they still use the same material. All right, so in order to get started, let's start playing around with the mapping of those textures. So if we play around with the X value on the location or the Y value, you can see that we get different variations of the texture. However, if we do it like this, you can see that all of those monkeys or all of those duplicates get exactly the same adjustments. And now they still look the same, so all of them have this dark spot right here. So instead, we want to use a random value for each of those objects. And for this, we're going to add in a new node, which is called Object Info. And right here, you can already see that we have this random output. Now we only want to affect the X and the Y location. So let's drag right here and bring in a combine XYZ node. So now we can plug this random output in just the X and the Y location. And now each of those monkey already has its unique offset. So you can see here we have this dark spot right here and each of them is unique. Now we can take this even further and also play around with the set rotation in order to get even more variation. So let's duplicate this combine XYZ node, plug it into the rotation and plug the random output into the set rotation. So now we have even more variation on the wood structure. Further, we could also play around with a random scale. So if we plug this random output in the scale, you can see that we get even more variation. However, in this case, this is way too much since this random output gives us values between zero and one, which isn't very well suited for the scale. So let's fix this by bringing in a map range node Plug this right here and now we can manually define the range of this random value. So in this case, I think I'm going to go from 0.8 to 1.2 and now this already looks way better. So I think that's it for the random mapping. And if you take a look at this, you can see whenever we duplicate those objects, we get random variations of the texture. So let's take this even further by also variating the color. And for this, we want to go after the base color and simply add in a hue saturation value node, which allows us to play around with the hue, which gives us different colors, saturation and the value to adjust the brightness. And once more, we want to use random values. So let's bring in the object info node. And if I plug this in just like this, you can see that we get very extreme results. Since this random output goes from zero to one. So once more, we want to bring in a map range node in order to adjust the range of those random values. And for the hue, I think I want to go from 0.45 to 0.55 to get just slight variations in the color. Then let's do the same thing with the saturation. Again, the default range isn't very suitable. So let's duplicate this map range and I want to bring it from 0.9 to 1.1. So we get just slight variations in the saturation. Then one more time for the value and I want to make it a bit brighter. So let's adjust the map range from 0.5 to 1.25. Depending on the material that you are using, you might want to play around with different values to get the desired look. But now we have another issue. We still don't have true randomness since this random output gives us the same value for each of those map range outputs. So if we get a high random value, we will get a high saturation, a high hue value and a high value for the brightness as well. So in order to achieve true randomness, we need to get a different seed for each of those random outputs. And in order to achieve this, we can bring in a white noise texture. Let's switch it from 3D to 4D and use the random input as the vector. So when you now look at this, you can see that depending on which W value we are using, we get different random outputs between zero and one. 
So we can use this W value as a seed. So let's plug this into the input of our first map range node, then duplicate it and also bring it to the other map range. And now simply add a different W value for each of those white noise textures. And now we have true randomness. So we can duplicate this and each of those duplicates will have a slightly different color. So this is how you can quickly add randomness to your objects by still using the same material on all of them. So let me also clean this up a bit. So I'm going to select all those nodes that we just added, press Ctrl J to put them into a frame and press F2 to rename it. And I'm going to call this random colors. Again, depending on the material that you are using, you might want to play around with those map range values in order to get different results that match to your material. Finally, I just quickly want to show you where I get my PBR materials from. So I have this huge library with more than 5000 PBR materials that I can simply drag and drop onto my objects. I got this library from the Blender market, so I'm going to put the link to this in the video description. As you can see, you can get three different versions, so one for $1, $9 or $25, which will give you access to 1000 or up to more than 5000 PBR materials that you can add to your asset library in Blender. And if you are watching this during the cyber sale of the Blender market, this will be discounted even more, so you can get it for even more affordable prices. So if you are doing a lot of texturing work in Blender, I highly recommend you to get it since it will make uh, texturing so much more easier and intuitive. And it can really save you a lot of time. So as you can see, you have different categories that you can choose from. So it is well organized. You can quickly drag and drop any materials onto your object, which will make it a lot faster. And afterwards, you can of course also open up the shader editor and add randomizations as I showed you in this tutorial today, or make any other adjustments that you might need to. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any further questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section. Bye.